Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is qualification day number one for the 2019 NOFSRL Indianapolis 250. And for the first time ever, we will be doing single car qualifying on Napa Fan. I have been looking forward to this event for a very long time, and today we will determine the Fast 9 Shootout and the Last 9 Shootout drivers. Nobody will go home today, and the poll will not be set until tomorrow. However, positions 10 through 26 for the Indianapolis 250 starting grid will be determined today, and if you qualify in one of those positions, that is where you will start for next Saturday's race. But what these drivers are doing are trying to avoid being one of the slowest nine drivers, because if you are, You'll have to re-qualify again tomorrow, and of those slowest nine who re-qualify tomorrow, the slowest two tomorrow will fail to qualify for the Indianapolis 250. On top of that, you're also trying to get into the fast nine, the fastest nine drivers in today's session will qualify again tomorrow, and that will determine the top nine positions for the starting grid of the Indianapolis 250 and the pole for the Indianapolis 250 as well. So... We're just going to have to see what happens here today as single car qualifications go on. The qualifying order is in the description down below, so if you want to see where you will be qualifying, when you will be qualifying, I should say, just look down there, and we will go in the order of those drivers. They are organized by the inverse of the practice speeds from yesterday, which means that the first driver out on the racetrack will be Igor Barreto in just a couple of moments. You will see the leaderboard on the left side of your screen um, for the entire event here today. And you'll also see the speeds in real time uh, to confirm that I am not making the speeds up. So you'll see the graphics are going to be a little bit different, something new that we're trying out here for these single car qualifications. Uh, but that's to determine and to ensure uh, that everything is completely fair on top top of that, the weather will also be the same for each qualifier, so everyone will have an equal footing. It is 82 degrees with a south wind at 9 miles per hour for every single driver, so the variable isn't going to be on the racetrack, it's only going to be in the cars, and mind to tell you, Every single car has equal ratings, so this is going to be very intense. The times are going to be very close to each other, but it's going to be fun to see who makes it onto the Fast 9 and the Last 9. Nobody is safe until tomorrow is done. Let's go ahead and get started. Agar Brett going to be the first guy out on the racetrack. Let's see what he does here in his first qualifying session from Indianapolis. And here we go. Ready for single car qualifications here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Agar Barreto going to be the first guy out here. How this will be done, each driver will get two laps, and the fastest lap that they clock in will be their official qualifying time. And Igor Barreto coming to take the green flag for the first run of the day here in Indianapolis 250 qualifying. 218 into the corner. The first lap is going to be a little bit slower than the second lap usually, so first lap basically a warm-up lap for the second lap, and the second lap is going to be the money lap for a lot of these guys here in today's session. Igor Barreto going to be his second Indianapolis 250 if he um, successfully qualifies for the event. 2.22 into the corner. The slowest point through the corner is 2.14, so these guys are really pushing it in this session here today. They'll be going fast around this two and a half mile speedway each and every time. We'll see what the first time is here for Igor Berto. You're going to see it right there at the top right corner. And it's a 41.463 for Igor Barreto. Expect this lap to be faster, however, as he is warmed up in the number 19 to get a fast lap here on the second lap. Love these sounds of these Indy cars that go around this two and a half mile speedway. Not as uh, loud and vibrant as it is when we have the rest of the field in with the race, but uh, it's still really cool to hear it here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Some of the best sounds in all of Enter 2003. Number 19, Igor Bredo coming to complete his second and final lap for day one of qualifications. He is going to clock in at a 41.424. So put that on the leaderboard. Let's get to the next driver here. It's Christian Russell in the number four. 
Christian Russell, second guy on the racetrack. And he's getting his warm-up lap done here for AJ Foyt Enterprises. Going to be his first ever Indy 250 if he qualifies. Like I said yesterday, 22 of these drivers making their first ever attempt at the Indianapolis 250. So a lot of new guys in this big event. Taking the green flag for his first lap here. Igor Bredo posted a 41.424. You see it right there on the side of your screen. You all see the green line. Now that will come into play once we uh, get 10 guys on the racetrack. And everyone above that green line is currently in the Fast 9 shootout. There'll eventually be a red line as well once we get into the later part of the session. And everyone below that red line later on will be in the slowest nine, meaning they'll have to requalify again to avoid elimination. Christian Russell coming around to complete his first lap. And you'll see it right there at the top right. It's going to be a 41.474. That is five one hundredths slower than Igor Bredo's fastest laps. We'll have to see if the number four can improve on his second time around. Christian Russell's never won before on Napa Fan. He's going to be going for his first career Napa Fan win in the Indianapolis 250 if he can in fact qualify on. Slowest through that corner right there, a 2.14. Slowest corner on the racetrack is probably turn number four. They hit down the 210 through that corner. At the stripe, Christian Russell is going to go to a 41.428. This four 1,000 slower than Igor Barreto. He'll go to second on the leaderboard. Now it's Audra Baranowskis on the racetrack. Third driver to make a time here in single car qualifications. Audra Banauskas looking to attempt her third Indianapolis 250. She was in this race 2016 and 2017. And she won the Freedom 50 last year in the CSX Indy Light Series. So you know Audra Banauskas is a good driver. And we'll have to see what she can do here on her qualifying time. It's looking like a lot of these times are going to be really close to each other. And if we end up with any ties, they will be broken by championship points. However, we do have five drivers who are in the Indianapolis 250 alone. And those drivers will be broken uh, by how many Napa fan wins they have. So advantage to Nicholas Samadio for those guys. The Indy 250 only guys. 41.473. And it's looking like we got a very really similar pattern going on here with these guys. They hit 41-4-7 and 41-4-2 at some point. So we'll have to see what Audra Banauskas does here on her lap. She's one of two female drivers looking to qualify for this Indianapolis 250 here this year. Eighty-two degrees. A little bit warm out here today with a nine mile per hour south wind. Audra Baranowski is looking to complete her second lap. It's going to be a 41.406. That was pretty fast right there. She's going to go to the top of the board in the number seven. Great lap there for Audra Baranowski, and that might be one that puts her in the fast nine. Next guy in line, Jonathan King in the number 28. We'll have to see if uh, he has anything or Audra Baranowskis. That was a significantly faster time than the first two drivers out on the racetrack. Nico Barreto and Christian Russell. Jonathan King won at Phoenix earlier this season. So, first driver out on the racetrack with a win so far in 2019. And he's been uh, driving quite a while here on Napa Fan. So, you know he's going to be a pretty good driver here uh, if he can qualify for the Indianapolis 250. This, however, will be his first Indianapolis 250 if he qualifies, so it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Low point of 214 through the corner there. 
And it's looking very similar for all of these guys. They're going to be running very similar lines throughout uh, this qualifying session. The times are going to be really close to each other, 41.47. The first laps for these guys are right around the 41.47 mark. For every single one of them, it's been around there. But the second lap uh, has been a little bit different from the first three. So we'll have to see what Jonathan King does here. And the hard thing is, we can't really determine how fast he's going on the racetrack. Unfortunately, this game uh, made in uh, 2003 uh, just didn't quite uh, have the technology to put that in, unfortunately. That would have been really cool to see um, how fast he was compared to everybody else. But uh, hey... We're not, we're not doing too bad right now. You guys can see the times for everybody. You're going to see the time right here for Jonathan King for his second fastest lap. It's going to be 41-4-2. That'll put him second, just ahead of Igor Barreto, but uh, quite a ways behind Audra Baranowskis. So we'll have to see um, how that stands up later on in the session. Next guy in line, Julio Caesar in the number 32. Julio Caesar. Winding up his lap time here in the number 32. Been a quiet season for him, but uh, we're going to change it around with the Indianapolis 250. Going to be his first ever start if he, in fact, qualifies. 217 at the line for the miles per hour for Julio Caesar. It's been a while since he's won a race on Napa Fan. He was full-time in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series last year. I do not believe he grabbed a win last year in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series this year. Full time in the IndyCar series, giving him his first opportunity in this event. We'll have to see what the number 32 can do here on his first lap. And it does seem quite obvious that the first lap really doesn't mean too much. The second lap is definitely where these guys are getting the fast speeds, and uh, we'll have to watch for Julio Caesar here, see what he clocks in here. It's going to be a 41.467. That may be one of the fastest first laps we've seen. And that might be a good sign for Julio Caesar to get a fast lap the second time around. Great opportunity for Julio Caesar here to possibly get to the top of the board. We'll have to see if he can do so. Once we get past Julio Caesar here, we'll be a seventh of the way through this qualifying session for only the first day of Indy 250 qualifications here on Napa Fan. Minimum speed, exiting the corner to 11. Lots of times we've been seeing them hit 210 off of turn four. At the line, Julio Caesar's gonna clock in at a 41.426. Not exactly what he wanted right there. He'll go to fourth on the leaderboard. A Little bit of a letdown there for Julio Caesar. Next guy in line, Lime Rock winner, Angel Olvera. Angel Olvera, next driver on the racetrack. Only the second winner so far this season to attempt. And uh, he got the win at Lime Rock earlier in the year, about a month ago. So, a good omen there for driver number 26 of Angel Olvera. Now, uh, when it comes to the rest of the times, Audra Bernowski is, is in a league of her own. She is currently... 14 one thousandths faster than Jonathan King, who is second. Everybody else is two one thousandths or four one thousandths within each other from second to fifth. So you can see the times there on the left side on the leaderboard. It's uh, definitely very interesting uh, what Audra Bernowskis has done, but uh, she's probably pretty safe to go. Uh, maybe even for the Fast 9 shootout, but uh, we still have ourselves 30 drivers left to qualify, so a lot can happen between now and the end of the session. 221 entering the corner for Angel Olvera. He slowed it down to 213 there, uh, exiting turn number 3. But he managed to stay 211 through the corner, and I think those little... Um, mile per hour differences are going to make the difference in these qualifying sessions. 41.451. That's a very fast first lap. But it's mainly the second lap that counts here for these guys. They get two laps and their fastest one is the time they post on the leaderboard. Might be a good idea too, maybe not to use up all your stuff on that first lap and try to get a good second lap instead because you're just slightly going faster at the line. It's a little jump at the line that helps you get that faster lap the second time around. We'll have to see what Olvera clocks in here. 
The sixth guy to complete a lap, Angel Olvera, will clock in at a 41.407. He just barely missed Audra Baranowska's time. He's going to fall the second, but a very fast lap there for driver number 26. Christian Vargas rolling around to complete his warm-up lap. Going to start the first lap here. The seventh guy on the racetrack, his teammate, Audra Baranowskis, is currently the fastest gal on the racetrack right now. We'll have to see if the Schmidt-Peterson team has something working out for him pretty well for this event and see if they can actually get a good time in for all three of their drivers. Mike and Knapp also coming up here. Uh, later on in the session, he is late in the session here today, so we'll have to see what he can do. 2.22 in the corner for Christian Vargas. We saw if Angel will very clocked in a very fast first lap. I'm wondering if that is a bit of a sign on how the second lap is going to be. We've seen the second lap be the fastest lap for every driver so far, and it's probably going to stay that way as this session rolls around. A 41.472. So, not the fastest of first laps so far in this qualifying session. But it's the second lap that counts. He was 209 off the corner there, off a of turn two. That might not have been what he wanted. That might not be a good sign for Christian Vargas on this lap. Entering 222. Going to be his first Indy 250 if he qualifies. Won the Coke 600 last year on the same day as last year's Indianapolis 250. Doesn't hit 210 off a of turn four, 211 off the corner. We'll have to see what he clocks in right here. Seventh guy on the racetrack, gonna clock in to 41417. That's gonna put him third on the leaderboard here at Indianapolis. And the first of our Indy 250 only drivers, this Madison Tall in the number 63 development driver to Nathan Stapleton attempting her first career Napa fan race. And in real life, remember this car, drove by Pippa Man, did not advance to the Indianapolis 500, so a little bit of added pressure for Madison Tall on her first ever start, but uh, I have, have some good feelings about her. Help from Nathan Stapleton, definitely one of the best drivers on Napa Fan. I think she's going to find a way around this place and qualify her way into the big show here today. She's about to complete her first lap here in the number 63 machine. Just hit 210 off the corner. And her first lap is going to clock in at a 41.479. So a little bit slow right there. We'll have to see what she does on her second lap. You got to think, too, all of these times are right on each other by thousands of a second. That's just how close everyone's going to be here for this Indy 250 qualifying session. So Every little inch counts on the racetrack for these guys in their qualifying runs. She maxes out at 217 in between turns 3 and 4, and she barely hit 210. This might not be a good lap for her compared to the rest. We'll have to see. At the line, Madison Tall goes to a 41.33, and she is currently the slowest on the racetrack. A tough break there for Madison Tall. She goes to 8. Now Thomas Troxel, the next guy on the racetrack. Madison Tall, currently the slowest driver in Indy 250 qualifications. Back in at a 41.433. It's the two female drivers, first and last right now. Audra Baranowska is still the fastest with a 41.406. We'll have to see if that time gets beat by anybody throughout this session here today. Here's Thomas Troxel in the 17, full-time driver. Uh, I don't believe he's ever won a race on that thing. Gonna be his first Indianapolis 250. Gonna start his first lap right here in the number 17. Like I said, every inch counts on the race check with how close these guys are in their times. One little slip up, one little minor thing you do wrong on the racetrack and you might not qualify for the Indy 250. But there is still another day, so if you are the slowest guy on the racetrack today, you'll get another chance tomorrow, as long as you're one of the top seven in the slowest nine shootout. So we'll have to see how that all goes down for everyone tomorrow. We'll just do it all over again with the fast nine and the last nine. Thomas Troxel, 
Going to clock in at a 41.484. That one probably the slowest of the first laps we have seen so far. Of course, we're not keeping track of the first laps. We're only keeping track of the fastest laps on the racetrack. And we'll see what Thomas Troxel does this time by. Number 17, the ninth qualifier of the day here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Troxel coming off a of turn number four. Seemed to get a good launch off the corner, so we'll have to see what he clocks in here. 41.421. That'll put him fifth on the leaderboard, so not a bad time there for Thomas Troxel. Halfway through these guys, right uh, midway through these guys, I should say, in the number 17. Dan Park now coming around to complete his warm-up lap. His teammate, Jose Mills, was fastest in practice yesterday. Dan Park looking to create a fast lap here and grab the fastest time in qualifying so far. Tenth driver to qualify in number 23, Dan Park looking to attempt his first Indianapolis 250, get into the show for the first time ever. Like I said, he's won Chick fil A Cup race before, came in season four over three years ago. So he's been around a while, took a long hiatus, but he's back in action. And uh, looking forward to see what he does here on this qualifying run. Off the corner, slowest time is a 210, but he barely hit it. And coming around to complete his first lap, Dan Park going to a 41.472. About an average for the first lap we've seen out of these guys so far, but like I said, second time is what matters for these guys here in qualifying. Dan Park going down the back stretch here. Two fifteen off the corner. This is really the big test right here. He is going to be 2.11 off the corner, so it should be a pretty good time here for Dan Park. Should get a good run off of turn four. We'll have to see what he clocks in. 41.412. That's third fastest of the 10 qualifiers. Great run there for Dan Park. Nick Smith, next guy in line, number 29. Me his first in the 250 as well, looking to clock in a fast time here. 216 at the line. Me his first lap right here for the number 29. So a couple of his teammates have already qualified. Jonathan King and Angel Olvera. They were both pretty fast. They're both top five right now on the leaderboard. So might be a good sign for the Andretti Autosport guys. Remember, they got Nicholas Sambadio on that team as well. So they need to the only driver. Remember. Samadia won this race last year, driving for Smith Peterson. Nick Smith. Really don't know what to expect out of Nick Smith. It's been a quiet season for him. And uh, hasn't really done much with his career on Napa Fan, unfortunately. He really hasn't been one of those stellar drivers. Not to say that he isn't a good driver, but uh, really isn't known for much here on Napa Fan, but he's looking to change that, and he could very well do so, as all these drivers can, with the equal ratings. It's the second lap right here. We'll have to see what his lap time is exiting turn number four. That seems to be uh, where these guys are messing up. You see a little bit of a slip-up right there by Nick Smith. Got a little loose off the corner. You might see that throughout uh, the day here, and that might be why some of these guys have gotten some slow times in. Nick Smith coming across the line, 41.42. He's going to tie with Jonathan King. And we'll have to go to the points and see which one has the tiebreaker because I'm not 100% sure on who does. But Nick Smith tying Jonathan King here as the 11th qualifier. Next guy in line, the first of our two defending Indianapolis 250 champions, the 2017 winner of this event, Luke Rainey in the number 64. Indy 250 only driver, the second Indy 250 only driver to qualify so far. The 12th qualifier of the day for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. He was with Team Penske last year. 
The season before that, he won with Ed Carpenter. This season, driving the number 64. As an NHC 50 only driver, he's going to have a good shot at it, I do believe, if he qualifies his way in because he won um, only his second career win in this race uh, back in 2017. First lap for Luke Rainey, going to be a 41.465. Pretty fast first lap for the 2017 Indy 250 winner. This is going to be Rainey's third Indianapolis 250 if he qualifies his way in. 211 off the corner. Pretty fast right there off of turn number two. Turn two and turn four. If you get the run down the long straightaways here, then you're going to have a good shot at getting a fast lap. I think that's the key to these guys getting fast laps. Of course, you guys can't see the miles per hour. I can since I got... Uh, all that junk on the screen right there. He kept it 211 through the corner. Luke Rainey expecting him to get a fast lap here on his second time. 41.433. That did not go well for Luke Rainey. He's going to tie with Madison Tall for the last position. And so far, the two Indy 250 only drivers, the two slowest in the field. Rainey has the tiebreaker on Madison Tall as Rainey has more Napa fan wins. Then driver number 63. Next driver in line, Christopher Alphaby, winner of the Mav TV 100 from Auto Club back in March. So he won the first of the three Crown Jewel events of the season. This the second one. And Alphaby, a rookie driver to Napa fan, definitely showed his strength in that race at the Auto Club Speedway. Very similar racing at Auto Club as to here in Indianapolis, so if Alphabet can qualify his way in, watch out for him to have a good shot at the uh, race victory come next Saturday. He's 210 off the corner. Like I said, these first laps, they uh, don't really mean too much. They kind of don't really tell us how fast you're going to be for their fastest lap, which is going to be the second lap, and I keep on saying, like I've said a lot, so uh, I'll try to stop saying that here today. It's going to take me a while to go through this. I've been doing this for an hour already. We're only on the 13th qualifier of Christopher Alphaby. Going to clock in at 41.481. A slow first lap right there, but that uh, might mean he saved his stuff up for the second lap. So Alphaby down the back straightaway. Entering the corner, he's going to max out at 2.22 entering the corner. So, you know, the heat of the day, and you can see Alphaby really get wide through the corner. That's going to slow him down. We're going to have to see what he clocks in here. He might have been a minimum of 2.12 off the corner, which is the first time we've seen that today. 41.436, that was not good. And we saw how loose he got off a turn Number three, he is now the slowest qualifier of the day. Not good at all for Christopher Alphaby. Colton Yeo getting out on the racetrack here in the number 88. The 14th qualifier of the day. Going to be a second Indianapolis 250 if he uh, successfully attempts. The last two qualifiers we have had so far in this session have been now 11th and 13th. Luke Rainey and Christopher Alphaby, two of the slowest times of the day so far. Nobody's been able to reach our third qualifier, Audra Baranowskis, who is currently fastest at a 41.406. Angel Olvera almost got her, could not do so. And uh, Baranowskis, still the gal to beat here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And she's got a lot of experience. Now we have to have Sam Idio. We have to have Davey Johnson, Marty Johnson qualify. Those guys have a lot of experience in this race. Um, same with Al Legacy and Jordan Lopez. And, you know, of all the guys who have qualified so far, Luke Rainey and Andre Baranowskis are the only two who have uh, two or more years of experience in this race. So... Luke Rainey did not do the best, but Baranowskis is the fastest, and I would expect a lot of these veterans to get some fast times in as the uh, session rolls on here. Colton Yo going to clock in his first lap at a 41.472. An average uh, first lap right there, but the first lap really has not been a good determining factor for the second lap, and it's this second lap that's always been the fastest for these guys. 
got to get wound up for that second lap, though. They got to be up to full speed for it, and that's mainly what these guys are fighting for right here. That's why we run two laps, because they're not really at full potential on that first lap, but they are on the second. We'll see what Colton Yo does. He got loose off the corner there. I think we're going to see that quite a bit throughout the day. I mean, I've said that already, but uh, they have not been getting through that corner too well. We'll see if that hurts Colton Yo here on his lap. At the stripe, 41.425. Not too shabby right there. He will go to ninth on the leaderboard. Not the slowest, but not exactly ideal for Colton Yo. Richard Kingart, last week's winner here in the Haas IndyCar Series, clocking in for the first lap here, or starting the first lap, I should say, hasn't clocked in for a lap yet. The Kingart, uh, second in the championship standings coming into this race, 14 points behind points leader Justin Zydell, really slow up the corner there at a 208. But this is only the first lap, so you want to make your mistake on the first lap and not on the second lap. But Richard King are definitely one of the best drivers so far this season. You're going to want to watch for him during Indy 250 week. But uh, he's got to qualify his way in first. So we'll have to see what he does here on the second lap. His first lap's going to clock in at a 41.469. Nice lap there. But it's the second lap that counts. And we'll see here as it all goes around for Richard Kinghart. He did not get through that corner well at all. 208 through the corner. Turn two is a really slow spot for a lot of guys, and I don't know if Kingart got out of there uh, fairly well. It's going to be Richard Kingart's first Indy 250 if he qualifies his way in. Got a little loose off the corner, maybe not as bad as some other guys. Pretty fast through the exit of turn four. Minimum of 211 at the line. Going to be a 41. Point four two one solid lap there ties with Thomas Troxel, but he'll break the tie with Troxel as he is farther ahead in the championship standing. So that will be the number thirteen going to the sixth or sorry the seventh position just ahead of Thomas Troxel there. Justin Zydell on his first lap now. He was already taking the green flag. Got out there pretty early. Our points leader not wasting any time. Trying to clock into time here is the 16th qualifier. Richard Kinghart, his championship competitor, just went to 7th on the board. This is going to clock in Zydell's first lap. Going to be a 41.461. A little bit faster than Kinghart's first lap. One thing I did forget to mention about Audra Baranowska, she actually started on the pole in 2017 for the Indianapolis 250. So uh, she's actually won the pole before, and she's actually still the fastest driver out there. We'll have to see with Justin Zydell, however. You know he's going to be fast as the points leader. Five top fives, six top tens in seven races for him. And you know he would really, really hate it if he missed out on the big show. We'll have to see what his time is here. Justin Zydell, second lap, going to clock in at a 41.426. That's going to tie with Julio Caesar. He will not make the Fast 9 shootout. A little bit slow there for Justin Zydell, but not too drastic. So we'll have to see how that compares later on in the session for our points leader. Joe Rakowski now just heading out in the number one. A little bit opposite of what Justin Zydell did. All these guys utilizing their time pretty well here to get on the racetrack. And uh, it's got different strategies on what they want to do. But everyone's trying to figure out how to beat Audra Baranowski. Because it seems like Angel Oliveira is the only other driver who has really figured it out. Dan Park and Christian Vargas with good times as well. But everyone else is you know, pretty close to pretty average. So... We'll have to see what Joe Rutkowski can do in the number one. And that does not mean he's the defending champion. Normally, this would have gone to Nicolas Samadio. Uh, but Samadio uh, went full-time in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. So that is why Rutkowski uh, moved over to the one. Actually, first season in the one. He didn't really move over from anywhere except the Turkey Hill Series from last year. But uh, good to see Joe Rutkowski. Qualifying this number one machine. We'll have to see what he does. Has yet to win a race this season. However, he is doing pretty good in the points coming into this race. And uh, remember, the Indianapolis 250 is not a double points race this year. Just a single points race. So, um, 
What's on the line is an Indianapolis 250 win, and that's a huge deal. Just ask Nicholas Amity or Luke Rainey here this weekend. They can tell you it's a huge deal to win this race. Rakowski going to get his first lap in here. He's going to clock in at a 41.455. Pretty good first lap for Joe Rakowski. We'll have to see what the second lap is for him here. Rakowski looking pretty strong right now in the number one. As he heads down the back straightaway. Most of these guys have been maxing out at 222 entering turn number three. But it's right here. You might see him get a little loose off the corner. Almost hit the wall, but not anything drastic. Off the corner, minimum speed, 211. So we'll have to see what he clocks in here. On his second and fastest lap, Rutt counts here with 41.422. Pretty solid. He is going to file in right behind Thomas Troxel and in the let's see, ninth position. Just inside the fast nine, but it might not be fast enough for later on. Dion Moon, next guy in line. Rakowski's teammate. So Joe Rutkowski ended up filing in right inside the fast nine, but uh, Dion Moon, the halfway car in this qualifying session. So there's a good chance that Rakowski's not going to make it into the fast nine shootout with the time he has, but he should. Be good to go to uh, lock his spot into the Indianapolis 250. Dion Moon going to start his first lap right here. And Dion Moon's one of those guys who's new to Napa fan. First season here. The Haas IndyCar Series got the win at Richmond. But other than that, it's been a really tough season for this team. They have rebounded slightly since that Richmond victory. But uh, hasn't been the best of runs for this number 22 team. Been a maximum of 222 off, uh, or entering the corner, I should say, uh, for all these guys here today for any 250 qualifying. Dion Moon hit a 210 off the corner. And his first lap's going to clock in at a 41.466. Pretty good first lap, but uh, it's only the second lap that counts, the fastest lap here. And uh, we're going to have to see what Dion Moon can do here for his second lap. Been getting really loose off of turn three. Slightly loose there for Dion Moon, but nothing too drastic. Minimum of 211 through the corner. This should be a decent lap. We'll have to see as he crosses the line. 41.431. Not a good one there for Dion Moon, and I'm not too good at determining whether it's a good lap or not. But uh, tough break for Dion Moon. That is going to put him currently 15th. Only ahead of Luke Rainey, Madison Tall, and Christopher Alphabee. Not what Dion Mood needed here in Indy 250 qualifying. And here we go for Cody Smart in the number 98. Going to be a second Indianapolis 250 if he successfully qualifies his way in. Right now the slowest time, as you see on the left side, is a 41.436. Remember, it is the last nine, the slowest nine here today. They have to re-qualify again tomorrow. And then of those nine tomorrow, the slowest two will fail to qualify for the Indianapolis 250. Cody Smart is hoping that he's not going to be one of those slowest nine, and he can make himself into the fast nine for this round. Right now the time to beat for the Fast 9 mark is 41.422, and that was set by Joe Rutkowski. So not too long ago when Rutkowski uh, set that time. I mentioned earlier um, that Audra Baranowski won the poll for 2017. It was actually Jesse Turner won the poll for 2017. Audra Baranowski started on the outside poll for that event. Baranowski is still the fastest driver in the field. Cody Smart was an Indy 250 only driver in 2017, the race that Luke Rainey won. 
He's going to come across to complete his first lap. Going to be a 41.458, a very fast first lap there for Cody Smart. But it is only the fastest lap that counts, and uh, it's going to be this one right here. Very slow through the corner, 208 exiting off. We'll have to see how that affects him as he clocks in his time in about 20 seconds. Cody Smart was suspended last year, but uh, reinstated for the 2019 season. And we'll have to see what he clocks in here. Looking for some redemption in this race after what happened last year. He's going to clock in at a 41.420. And that's going to set him at a three-way tie between Nick Smith and Jonathan King. And he is currently in the Fast 9. Very good time there for Cody Smart in the number 98. Tyler Ritty here on his first lap already. He's going to clock in for his first lap right here. Wasting no time getting out on the racetrack. His first lap is going to be a 41.466. Pretty average lap time right there for the first one. Tyler Ritty looking to qualify for his second Indianapolis 250. One career win in the Haas IndyCar Series. Came at Pikes Peak last year in a wild race at Pikes Peak last year. And we will be going back to that racetrack in July. I think that's when it is. Tyler Ritty been around that pin for quite a while. Other than that uh, race win last year in um, the uh, Pikes Peak race. Really haven't seen much of them elsewhere on Abifan, but uh, this is, like I said, a race that can definitely change the career for any of these drivers who win it. At the line, Tyler already 41.432. That was not what he needed. He is going to fall to the 17th position in the number 15. And that's a dangerous time right there for Tyler already. Landon Lyons coming around to begin his first lap. And he was in the Freedom 50 last year. Can't remember exactly how well he did, but in his first ever start in the Indy Light Series last year, he got the race victory at Riverside. Been kind of a mediocre season for him in the number 60, but uh, really excited to see what Landon Lyons brings to the Haas IndyCar Series this season, and especially here at Indianapolis. So 20 drivers have posted a time so far the top 26 are locked into the show and they will be in the Indianapolis 250 after we're done with all 35 qualifiers positions 10 through 26 get locked into their positions that they qualify in and the top nine requalify for the pole Landon Lyons 210 off a of turn number uh, one and 209 off of turn number two. That side of the racetrack is just a little bit slower than the other side. Turns three and four faster than turns one and two. No question about it. Going to be Landon Lyons first in the 250 if he qualifies. He comes around here. He's 215 off the corner. 217 entering turn number four. And off the corner, he is 211 coming to the line. It's going to be a 41.4. Three zero, Not the best of times there for Landon Lyons. He's going to file in the 16th position on the leaderboard. Here is the 22nd qualifier of the day. Last year's defending Indianapolis 250 champion Nicholas Samadio in the number 25. I'd expect him to be pretty fast here in this session. And you got to watch out for this guy this weekend. Going to be his fifth Indianapolis 250. If he, in fact, qualifies his way in more than any other driver in history of this race. So, Nicholas Amidia, definitely a highly experienced veteran of these Indy cars on this two-and-a-half-mile oval. He's going to go ahead and get his first lap started right here. He's 216 at the line. Nicholas Samadio has been in this event since 2015. It was the second event of the 2015 season. He's been in every Indianapolis 250 that was part of the Haas IndyCar Series. The only one he was not in was the special event, which was the first one in 2015. But uh, every single Haas IndyCar Series, Indianapolis 250, he has been in. 
And, uh, like I said, defending champion of the event won this race last year, driving the number five for Smith Peterson. Watch out for him again because he is the most experienced guy in this entire field. First lap, a 41.479. Pretty slow first lap there, but I'll have to see if he winds it up here for the second lap. Minimum of 209 through the corner. Went pretty fast there through turn number two. Now watch out for the exit of turn number three. That's where these guys tend to slow it down and uh, get a little loose off the corner just a little bit. Sam Adio. Nothing too drastic there on the number 25 through the corner. A minimum of 211. He just barely hit 210. Here he comes to the line to complete his lap. Nicholas Sam Adio at a 41.4. Two, one, that's good enough to qualify his way onto the show. He is going to tie with Richard Kingart and Thomas Troxel. However, he's going to be put in the 10th position as he does not have a tiebreaker on Kingart or Troxel. But uh, he won't make the fast nine, but he should make the show in that number 25. Jordan Lopez looking to qualify for his third Indianapolis 250. Been driving this 14 since 2017. Actually took over, I believe, for either Trey Barto or Matt Dalio in this ride. And uh, Trey Barto, congratulations to him once again on his race victory last night. His first since 2016. Matt Dalio, another guy who drove this car, also looking for his first win in a little while. Hopefully they get some wins over there. But uh, right now it's about Jordan Lopez. And he's been the experienced veteran in this number 14 for A.J. Foy Enterprises. We'll have to see what he does. His teammate Christian Russell currently stands at a 41.428 in 16th position. Russell's kind of on the bubble as this session goes along. He has six guys underneath of him. He would only need three more guys to be slower than him, and he would be in the show. But we'll have to see if that actually happens. That's for Christian Russell. This is Jordan Lopez in number 14. Was in this race 2017 and 2018. His third consecutive Indianapolis 250. Coming around to complete his first lap in the number 14. A 41.480, one of the slowest first laps we've seen so far today. Well, we'll have to see how Lopez does around this racetrack. 208 exiting the corner, a bit slow right there for the number 14. Might want to watch out for this one. These times throughout this entire session. They've been right on each other, but no one has been able to surpass Audra Baranowskis, who is the third qualifier of the day. And only one person has come close, that being Angel Overa, who qualified a couple cars after her. Lopez at a 41.426. Pretty average, but he should be able to make it onto the show with that time. Mike Knapp has just crossed the line to start his first lap. I know he's very excited about this event. And, uh, taking over the ride that Nicholas Sam Idio won this race in last year. Definitely a huge stepping stone for Mike Knapp, but I uh, wouldn't expect anything less than him qualifying his way onto this event. We'll just have to see. Remember, the last nine have to requalify again tomorrow to avoid elimination, and uh, the slowest two of those nine tomorrow will fail to qualify. Mike and Epps first lap gonna be a 41.462, one of the faster first laps we have seen here today. But it's the second lap that makes all the difference. 210 off of turn number one. He's gonna hit a uh, minimum of 208, but he just barely hit 208 through the corner. Down the back stretch he goes. No one has hit 223 on any of their laps. Been a maximum of 222 here today down the back straightaway. Off of turn number four, minimum speed of 210. He just barely hit 210. We'll have to see if it's going to be a slow one here for Mike and Knapp. 41.44. Oh my, that was bad. 
Mike and Apple head straight to the back, and that was a very disappointing lap by the number five. Here's Al Legacy, an Indy 250 veteran, now with Mike Knapp, who just qualified. Both of his teammates are currently inside the top five. Audra Baranowskis, the fastest, with a 41.406, and Christian Vargas with a 41.417. Very strange to see that out of uh, the other Schmidt Peterson machine. I really thought that Mike and I would have done a lot better than that, but so far the slowest time of the day. The good thing is he will get another shot to get out of that hole, but no question he's going to be in the last nine shootout tomorrow. Al Legacy. Gonna be his third Indianapolis 250 if he qualifies his way in. Been in this thing since 2017. And he's been driving this 20 his entire career. Legacy definitely knows his way around this place. One of the uh, more experienced guys attempting this year's Indianapolis 250. So far, the only big surprise is probably Luke Rainey. Um, being as far back as he is, maybe Tyler already as well, both of those guys with uh, prior experience in this race. But other than that, everyone else has been kind of normal, uh, as we would expect them. The veterans being up front and uh, some of the rookies being in the back. A 41.482, one of the slower first laps that we've seen. Actually slower than Nicolas Samadio's first lap. Mike and App kept a 209 through the corner. That's a good sign. We'll have to see what happens off of turn number four. And they max out at 222, entering turn at number three. A little bit loose there for Mike and App. Nothing drastic. We'll have to see what happens here. Al Legacy is qualifying right now, not Mike and App. Still thinking about that really slow time. That was definitely uncharacteristic at the line. Legacy with a 41.43. He's going to tie with Landon Lyons. We'll have to go to the point standing to see which one has the tiebreaker. That could be right at the line for the last nine shootout. Keyshawn Richardson, 26th qualifier of the day. We now have 10 drivers left to qualify here in the first round of Indy 250 qualifications. Richardson is on his first lap already. He's going to clock in right here in the number three. This one guy really don't know what to expect, um, but uh, I really think that he's going to get a good lap here. Just a little intuition. 41.477. That's his first lap. Really don't know what uh, to expect out of Keyshawn Richardson, but I uh, just have a feeling. Just have a feeling that the Penske machines are wired up pretty good this weekend. to see what it clocks in here not that loose off the corner pretty good pretty stable through the corner minimum of 211 I'm thinking this is gonna be a fast one but I haven't been too good with predicting that 41.425 midway through the field he should be good to go to qualify for the Indianapolis 250 with that lap right there We got two Indy 250 only drivers left. Andrew Ross and Ace Garcia. They're the next two guys on the list. Here's Andrew Ross. And one of the most vibrant cars we have on the racetrack because the axles are neon green. He'll stand out in the race if he qualifies. But uh, we, should be able, we should be able to tell if he's going to make it into the show here. If he's going to be able to uh, solidify a spot. Because, uh... I say if he's above 41.43, I think he's good to go. It's looking pretty good for Christian Russell right now. He's got how many behind him? Eight, so he only needs one driver to be slower than him. So it looks like Christian Russell's good to go here. And he qualified second here today with the 41.428. And we've had a lot of ties out there. They've been broken by the points. Um, and the order you see on the left is the correct order. First lap here for Andrew Ross. It's going to be his first ever Indianapolis 250. Almost won the Turkey L Truck Series Championship last fall. Won a Chick-fil-A Cup Series race at Texas, which is going to be our next race after this one in the IndyCar Series. Of course, Andrew Ross will not be in that one. He's only going to be in the Indianapolis 250. 
And coming to line for his first lap, 41.473. I have a feeling we should have averaged these times out, but if I did that, I'd be here for twice as long as I always ha already have. And I'm actually on the second day of recording this. You guys probably wouldn't realize that. But, uh, started last night, realized it was going to take too long, and I finished up today. So, uh, two old days for just the first round. Then we also got to do the second day for you guys, which is the, um, Fast 9 and the Last 9. Off the corner, Andrew Ross does not hit 210. We'll see what he clocks in here as an Indy 250 only driver attempting his first ever IndyCar start. 41.421. He's going to be in the Indianapolis 250 for 2019. Here is Ace Garcia, the final of the five Indy 250 only drivers. He was in this race last year driving. For Andretti Autosport, he moves over to the number 33. 41.476 for his first lap. Here is his fast lap for the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing Team. Ace Garcia also driving in the Coke 600 as well. He, along with Nicholas Samadio and Andrew Ross, attempting the double. And if Garcia can clock in a fast enough time, all three of them will do the double. Oh, he was almost in the wall there. That was a very loose race car off the corner. And he barely hit 210. I'm not too confident about this one. We'll have to see Ace Garcia at the line. 41.414. Oh, boy. That surprised me. I didn't think it was going to be a good one, but he was definitely pushing it. And that is one of the fastest laps we've seen in a while. He is going to go to fourth on the leaderboard, and he might just be in the fast nine from that one. <laughs> really good lap there by Ace Garcia in the number 33. He is in the Indy 250. Here is Davey Johnson, the second most experienced driver in this field. Going to be his fourth Indy 250 if he successfully qualifies. So far, two drivers have officially gone under the line. Christopher Alphaby and Micah Knapp. Madison Tall on the bubble right now with Davey Johnson out on the racetrack. The slowest nine. I'll have to requalify again tomorrow to avoid elimination. Davey Johnson going to complete or start his first lap here. Expect a pretty good time out of Davey Johnson. The one guy who really surprised us, I think, was Al Legacy. I expected a better time out of him, and he did not deliver, unfortunately. Legacy currently 22nd. Davey Johnson looking to get a fast time in here. Won the first race of the season in the Haas IndyCar Series on the Daytona Road Course. Looking to complete his first lap here in qualifying. It is going to be... A 41.467. Times are so close, I know the first four numbers. And the first four numbers for every single lap is 414. That's just how close these guys are. 110% strength on the racetrack. It won't be that high for the race. As they'd be wrecking quite a bit, uh, quite a bit if, they, if it was. But uh, that, along with the equal ratings... And when I say equal, I mean it's 55-55 for everything except aggression. Aggression's at 100, so... We'll have to see what Davey Johnson can do. Does not hit 210 off the corner. Here he comes off turn four to complete his second and fastest lap. 41.423. He's in the show for the Indianapolis 250 with that lap right there. He might be the first driver to hit 41.423. He is... He goes to 14th on the grid. Got six drivers left here in qualifying. Next guy in line, Jaden Scott. Going to be his first Indy 250 if he qualifies, and I have no clue what he's going to do. One of those guys who has some experience on that fan, but not too much. One career win in Arca. Let's have to see what he does around this racetrack. Luke Rainey is on the hot seat right now, and uh, it does not look like he's going to avoid the last nine. 
Remember, nobody gets sent home at the end of the day. It's tomorrow where we requalify the bottom nine drivers in the last two fail to qualify. So it's not over yet for guys like Luke Rainey, Mazatol, Mike Knapp, Christopher Alphaby. I have to see what those guys do tomorrow, but uh, it's not looking good for the 2017 champion of this race. Jaden Scott, number 30. Gonna max it out at 222 entering the corner. Wasn't at 222 for too long though, so we'll have to see what this lap brings him. Jaden Scott, I believe, is rather deep in the points in the Haas IndyCar Series right now, so getting into this race would mean a lot, and winning it would mean so much more towards the championship. 41-4-7-0. The thing about Jaden Scott, or actually the thing about this race, is not double points like I mentioned earlier, but uh, the thing about Jaden Scott, so he's one guy who would need a win like this to bounce back in the championship, because you got to remember, after this race, we're halfway through the season. Only eight races remain after this one. Two of those at Watkins Glen. So only seven more racetracks after the Indianapolis 250 until we crown a champion in the middle of August. And uh, for Jaden Scott, you know, he needs a win now. And uh, he's probably thinking about that a little bit. But like I said, everyone focusing on getting the Indy 250 win. Let's see what Jaden Scott clocks in. 41.426. He will tie... Uh, Justin Seidel, Julio Caesar, and Jordan Lopez. So four-way tie for the current 18th position. We'll have to see where Jaden Scott files in with the tiebreaker. But, uh, of course, you guys see it right on the left of your screen right there. So Jaden Scott should be safe to make it on to the Indianapolis 250. Nathan Faden, next guy on the racetrack. Five drivers to go. Luke Rainey, Madison Tall, Christopher Alphaby, and Micah Knapp all confirmed for the last nine. Which in return means that the top four drivers on the leaderboard are locked into the fast nine. And we'll go for the pole. Audra Baranowskis, Angel Olvera, Dan Park, and Ace Garcia. They're all confirmed to make it in to the fast nine shootout for the pole. Nathan Faden. Fourth in the championship standings coming into the Indianapolis 250, 71 behind Justin Zydell. He, along with Justin Zydell, are the only two drivers in the top five in points who have yet to win this season. Nathan Faden has been very consistent so far this year. Nowhere near as consistent as Justin Zydell, but still very consistent compared to the rest of the field. This is his first lap right here. Hit 210 off the corner just slightly at the line. It's going to be a 41.468. A mid-range lap there for the first time around. We'll have to see if that translates to a fast second lap. You know, one turn I really haven't been focusing on too much is turn one. They might be getting a little bit loose off of there, which might be affecting their times here in Indianapolis. It also depends on how far you can go at 222 entering the corner. He went pretty far there on 222. But he almost hit the outside wall, but he might be pushing it pretty good. We saw Ace Garcia do that, almost hit the outside wall right there, and it uh, turned out to be a pretty good time for him. But let's see what Nathan Faden does at the line. It's going to be a 41.422. He'll tie with Joe Rutkowski. He's in the big show for the Indianapolis 250. Jeremiah Earls, the fourth to last driver to clock in a time here today in the first day of Indy 250 qualifications. He begins his first lap in the number 12. And he's one of these guys we really don't know what to expect out of. He's yet to win a race this season. But uh, you never know, he could surprise us. Generally, the more experienced guys have been faster than the rookies in this qualifying session, and that's general. So we do have some guys like Luke Rainey, like Al Agassi, who are back in there. Jeremiah Earl's almost hitting the wall, but he might get a fast lap out of that one. Of course, this is just the first lap, so it might not be a telling sign to the second lap. It hasn't been all day long. Nicholas Amadio drove a really slow first lap and easily advanced on, but he had some guys who 
Drove really fast first laps and uh, failed to uh, post a good time. It was a 41.464 for Jeremiah Earls that time. We'll have to see what he does here on his fast lap. Lap number two for Jeremiah Earls. Pretty good off the corner. That's what you want here in Indianapolis. Did not hit 210 off of turn number four, so this should be good enough, but you don't know until they cross the line. Jeremiah Earls, 41.414, ties Ace Garcia, and he is in the fast nine with that one because he'll go to fourth place and lock his position into the fast nine shootout. Great run there for Jeremiah Earls. Marty Johnson, next driver out on the racetrack. This is going to be Johnson's fourth. Excuse me, wrong Johnson. It's going to be Johnson's third in the Indianapolis 250 if he successfully qualifies. He was not in the 2017 edition of this race, but he was in 2016 and last year as well. And he is one of the experienced veterans. His teammate, Justin Zydell, is locked in the show. Only three drivers left to qualify here on day number one. And Marty Johnson really, really wants to get into that fast nine. He wants this pull. He wants this race victory. It's been a tough week for him. And uh, wants a little bit of redemption from uh, all of that. And here he goes to start his first lap here at Indianapolis in the number nine. You know, in real life, this car is fast. It's always going to be a threat to win the Indy 500. We'll see if Marty Johnson can do so in the Indy 250. He does have a win here at Indianapolis. Came in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, season number four. Won the raised eyes in tubing 400 in that season. So he knows how to get around this place and uh, would not be surprised if he grabbed the fast lap here. But the same thing can be said for other guys like Luke Rainey and Al Agassi. And they did not post fast times. As a matter of fact, Al Agassi is currently on the bubble right now. As Dion Moon, Tyler Already, Luke Rainey, Madison Tall, Christopher Alphaby, and Micah Knapp are all underneath the cut line, meaning they'll have to requalify again tomorrow to avoid elimination. Remember, once again, two drivers will fail to qualify. I really want to reiterate that, and that's why I've said it so many times, because we've never done it before, and I don't want everyone to expect that they're automatically in, because it's not a guarantee. Marty Johnson really pushing up. Wide up the racetrack there for the number nine through the corner. Just barely hit 210. We'll have to see what he gets at the line here. Going to be a 41.427. That will be enough to make it into the show. So Marty Johnson good to go. He'll avoid the last nine. I believe he is the first driver to clock in at a 41.427. And if I'm Christian Russell, I might be getting a little nervous. I said he might be good, but nobody has been able to, or should I say no one's been slower than him. Um, since I last mentioned it. So watch out for Christian Russell. He might get knocked out here on the next car. Noah Clifton. The next to last driver to make a qualifying lap here today. It's just him and Jose Mills. Jose Mills was fastest yesterday in practice, so he will go last. Noah Cliven was second fastest in practice. However, those times were made in the draft, so keep that in mind. They might not necessarily be the fastest here in qualifying. Driver on the bubble right now is Landon Lyons. And if Noah Clifton is faster than 41.43, Landon Lyons will have to requalify again to avoid elimination tomorrow. Two guys are outside the bottom 26, but not yet safe. They're both Christian Russell, who qualified second, and Landon Lyons, who qualified midway through today. 41.472 for Noah Clifton in number 27. Clifton, a two-time winner in the Haas IndyCar Series. It's going to be his second Indianapolis 250. He raced this race in 2016, quite a while ago, but he's never had to do this before. 
Single car qualifying. He was way up high through the corner. We'll have to see how that affects him. But he was pretty fast off of turn number four. We'll see what he gets here. 41.4. 3 3. That was not what Noah Clifton needed. Christian Russell is safe from elimination. He will be in the Indianapolis 250 and will not have to attempt tomorrow. But Noah Clifton will as he falls in a tie with Luke Rainey and Madison Tall. He will be ahead of those guys and that will only affect the order in which they qualify in the last nine shootout tomorrow. And here we go for the final qualifier of day number one. Now remember... This will not set the starting lineup completely. Only positions 10 through 26 get set here today. The rest of the positions will get set tomorrow when we have the fast nine shootout and the last nine shootout. And Jose Mills was the fastest yesterday in practice. He needs at least a 41.419 to advance to the top nine to the fast nine shootout. And he needs at least a 41.429 to avoid going to the last nine. So only one one hundredth of a second in between the fast nine shootout and the last nine shootout. That's just how close it's been here today. Jose Mills gonna show us what he's made of right here. We'll have to see what he gets on his first lap. And here he comes to start his fast lap. Moment of truth for Landon Lyons. He wants him to be at least 41.43 or lower. So 41.491. That might just be the slowest first lap of the day. We'll have to see what Jose Mills does here in the number 59. Entering the corner at 222. Let's see how Lucy gets off the corner. He was a little high there. That might affect him. Coming off of turn number four at 211. Did not hit 210. Here we go. Moment of truth for Jose Mills. Will he advance into the Indianapolis 250? 41.20. He is in the show. And he will not make the Fast 9 shootout because he will not be able to break the tie between the three guys who already have clocked in at 41-4-2. But nonetheless, Jose Mills is in the show, which means Landon Lyons is pushed out and he will have to go to the Last 9 shootout tomorrow. So that does it. Let's give you guys the fast nine, the last nine, and positions 10 through 26 here from the first day of Indianapolis 250 qualifications. So that's going to do it for day number one, but we are not done yet. Audra Baranowskis has not won the poll. She's going to have to do it again and battle the other eight guys who finished top nine here today. Here is your fast nine shootout for tomorrow in the order in which they will qualify again tomorrow. Uh, this will actually take place after the last nine. The fast nine is going to be the last qualifying event of tomorrow, but we're going to go ahead and uh, give you guys a qualifying order for this first. And it's going to start out with Jonathan King. He'll be the first guy on the racetrack for the fast nine shootout. Nick Smith, Cody Smart, Christian Vargas, Ace Garcia, Jeremiah Earls, Dan Park, Angel Olvera, and Audra Baranowskis. And those are the nine guys going for the pole tomorrow. And the pole sitter will get 10 points towards the championship with second place getting nine points, third place getting eight, and so on. Jose Mills is awarded one point towards the championship because he will be starting in the 10th position. This is how they will line up from 10th to 26th. Jose Mills qualifying 10th. In row number six, it'll be Richard Kingart and Thomas Troxel. Row number seven will have Nicholas Amadio and Andrew Ross, a couple of Indy 250 only drivers. Row number eight will have Nathan Faden and Joe Rutkowski. Row number nine will see Davey Johnson and Igor Barreto. Row number 10 will see Keyshawn Richardson and Colton Yo. Row number 11 will see Justin Zidell and Jaden Scott. 
Row number 12 will see Julio Caesar and Jordan Lopez, and row number 13 will be Marty Johnson and Christian Russell. Then it's the last nine shootout, and these guys will do single car qualifying again, and the slowest two in the last nine shootout will fail to qualify for the big race. Landon Lyons, Al Legacy, Dion Moon, Tyler Orready, Noah Clifton, Luke Rainey, Madison Tall, Christopher Alphabee, and Micah Knapp. The slowest nine guys here today, and they will qualify in that order from fastest to slowest. So a little bit different for the last nine two. That will be the first thing you see tomorrow at 11.30 Eastern right here on Napa Fan. But other than that... That's it for day number one. Congratulations to the nine drivers advancing onto the Fast 9 shootout. And they will go for the poll tomorrow, probably around 11.50 Eastern tomorrow is when I guess that's going to be. Of course, the big thing is going to be the last nine shootout where we knock out and send two guys home. Who's it going to be? We'll find out tomorrow. It's going to be different weather, different scenario, but it's going to be the same system as what we had today. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I cannot tell you how long this alone took me. Uh, it took a very long time. As a matter of fact, about five hours to do all of this, and that's not even including the editing. So uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, supporting this video because uh, it means quite a bit to me. I put a lot of effort into this, and I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. For day number two, where we will crown the pole sitter and send two guys home. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. Remember, next weekend, next Saturday at noon, it is the big race, the Indianapolis 250. Until then, I will see you guys later.